Welcome to Math with Professor V. This is your latest integral of the day. We have an indefinite integral of 1 over x squared plus x rad x dx. If you want to pause the video, give it a try on your own. Um, I'll just give you a little hint what I did. First, I did a substitution and then one other technique, which was they were both straightforward. So let's hop right to it. First thing I did was I let u equal rad x. And then remember, you could find du right now, but it's just nicer if you square both sides first. So then u squared is equal to x. Then we can differentiate both sides and we have 2u du is equal to dx. Beautiful. So already I can see, all right, this dx in the numerator, I'm gonna replace with 2u du. And then what is going on with this x squared right here? We'll come back to this line right here. I know u squared is equal to x. So if I square both sides, then u to the fourth is equal to x squared. So that's how that term's gonna get replaced. And then x times rad x, that's gonna be u squared times u. Okay, so I'll remind you right here, this guy is u squared and this is u. So now let's go ahead, we can rewrite this whole integral all in terms of u. In the numerator, remember, we're gonna have 2u du, and then in the denominator, we're gonna have u to the fourth plus u squared times u. How we doing? My Calc 1 class just learned u sub the other day, and they were mildly traumatized at first, and then by the end, they were doing great. So. Let's carry on, let's clean up as much as we can. So this is what, 2u du over u to the fourth plus u cubed. Great. And then, ooh, I can cancel out a u from the numerator and denominator. So this is gonna be 2 du over u cubed plus u squared. Excellent. Now, if I look here, all right, my integrand is a rational function. Let me go ahead, do partial fraction decomposition, and then hopefully that'll be the end of things. Then we can just integrate from there. So it's partial fraction time, partial fraction decomp. So we have two over, let me factor the denominator. I could take u squared out of both terms, and then you're left with u plus one. And then notice this u squared, that's a repeated linear factor. So we have to list out the decomposition as follows. We're gonna have a over that linear factor to the first power, and then you keep increasing the exponent. So then it'll be b over u squared plus, now I can move on to c over u plus one. And had this been u cubed, then I would have had another term, c over u cubed, and then this would have been d over u plus one, right? Correct. Okay, good. Then our next step is we're going to multiply everything by the LCD. So I'm going to just multiply everything by u squared u plus 1. And then let's see what we got going on. This is going to be 2 equals a times u times u plus 1 plus b times u plus 1 plus cu squared. And then here you have a couple uh, ways you can solve. You could multiply everything all out and then equate coefficients of like terms. What I like to do is substitute in different values of u that will zero out many of the factors here. So what do I mean by that? Like for the first one here, I'm gonna go ahead and let u equal zero because I see this little u here and here. And then I'll be left with 2 equals a times 0 plus b times 0 plus 1 plus c times 0, which tells me, okay, b is equal to 2, right? And then similarly, if I want to zero out the other factors, u plus 1, I can just go ahead and let u equal negative 1. And then we'll have 2 equals a times 0 plus b times 0 plus c times negative one squared, which will be positive one. So then I know c is equal to two. And then lastly, to get a, there's nothing else I can substitute in that would make those factors zero. So just pick anything for you that's friendly, 
manageable, substitute it in. And since I already know B and C, I can plug that in as well and find A. So I just went with letting U equal one. That's a very friendly little number, don't you think? So two equals, I'm going right here, okay? A, I don't know. I'm letting U be one, one plus one, plus B, now I know B is two. U is 1 plus 1 plus C is 2 times 1 squared. Good? You okay? All right. So 2 equals, this is 2A plus 2 times 2, that's 4 plus 2. So I've got a 6 on the right-hand side. 2 minus, four, uh, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. And so negative 4 equals 2A. Then I know A is negative 2. Yay, so we've got all our constants. Now I can rewrite my integrand using its partial fraction decomposition. So here we go. So we have, it's nice to throw in like a little, you know, narrative statement as you work through these problems. Integral. A is negative two over u plus b, that's positive two over u squared plus c, which is 2 over u plus 1 du. Good. And then now let's just go term by term. Things should be pretty relaxing. Antiderivative of negative 2 over u would be negative 2 natural log absolute value of u. And then remember right here, 2 over u squared, that's 2u to the negative second. So if I add 1 and divide by the new exponent, it's going to be negative 2u to the negative first. Plus, antiderivative of the last term is 2 natural log absolute value u plus 1 plus c. Good. Okay, and then let's go back to the original variable, which was x. And remember, we made the substitution, let u equal rad x in the very beginning. So then I have now negative 2 ln. Rad x is never negative, so I don't need to keep writing absolute value. I can just switch to parentheses. Minus, I'm going to write this as 2 over rad x, so it looks better. Plus 2 ln, again, I can just put rad x plus 1 in parentheses. I don't need absolute value. Plus c. And then, you know, the back of the book, they left it like this. I'm just... I am irritated. I would, at the very least, have put this natural log, the positive one, first. That's the star of the show. These negative ones, they can just hide in the back with their negativity. You know what I mean? That looks better. If anyone's particularly inclined, you could combine these into a single logarithm. But, you know, at the very least, put the positive term first. Heavens to Betsy. Okay, so that concludes your integral of the day, and I'll have the Calculus 3 final exam video from last semester, like last semester's Calc 3 final. I'll be filming the solutions and have that up soon, so make sure your notifications are on, and then another episode of Ask Professor V is coming up. So just stay tuned, and then summer break will be here for me shortly in a few weeks, so I'll work on recording more advanced integration techniques like some of you guys have asked and then i'm working on a business calculus more linear algebra and differential equations and whatnot so lots of good stuff coming soon subscribe if you're not already give the video a thumbs up tell me what your favorite part was did you solve it differently i'm curious i think it was pretty straightforward but if there was a, some other approach i'd love to hear it and also follow me please on instagram tiktok twitter math with professor v my TikTok, I have some good stuff there. I also showcase some of my students. They like to make little guest appearances and interviews. So you can kind of see what my classroom looks like and stuff if you're interested in that. All right. Thank you guys so much for your support. I love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.